From the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your evening update. American Door Company has been family owned and operated for over 29 years, supplying Northern California with quality garage doors, garage door openers, and installed with the best service you'd expect from a locally owned company. We serve all of Northern California from Willows all the way up to the Oregon State Line. Give us a call today. Hello everyone, quick programming note. Just to let you know that I typically, during the fire season, if there's fires out there, I'm gonna be doing my deep dive and you know extensive look at the fires, typically in the morning hits. So for the morning update that uploads no later than 6 a.m. and of course on Coffee with Kruger where we can get interactive, you can ask questions about it. But on days where you know it's just nothing terribly new to report, not a whole lot new to report. Yeah, sure, the fire may have grown and you know the, the fire printer may have changed a little bit here, but for the most part, I'm gonna be covering those fires mainly in the morning hours. There will be exceptions to that rule if something big and major happens. But in the meantime, during the day, you really wanted to find out what the latest is on the fires, uh, you can go to weathernorcal.com, click on the fire danger graphic right here. Just click that and that'll take you right to pretty much every resource you need from watch duty, giving you the latest updates on the fire acreage and the perimeters and the, any evacuations or anything like that. Then of course, any fire weather danger, fire weather risks are in there as well. And not to mention a lot of the Office of Emergency Management offices to give you a better idea on what to do with those evacuations and warnings as well. So again, weathernorcal.com and then click on the fire danger graphic and you will be good to go. It's kind of a one-stop shop to really type of situation. Well, it is heating up once again as we go into tomorrow. Can you believe it? A little bit of a break today. I mean, a little bit of a break, right? But then it's warming back up again as we go into the next three days. Hot and dry conditions will keep that fire danger elevated. Now, what I mean by that is it's that's going to be the case the rest of the summer, right? Hot and dry. That's the story. However, it's the winds that we really have to keep a close eye on. Now, there's a potential for mountain thunderstorms this weekend, mainly to our east, but we'll take a closer look at what that means and if we could potentially see some of that. And then highs will be closer to normal for next week. Now, the normal in the valley is about 100 degrees. So at least we're gonna be back down to just a, a right around or just above 100 degrees in the long range. Taking a look at your neighborhood forecast for tomorrow, yeah, there it is, 110 degrees plus, especially for the north end of the valley as we're heading southward, there is a little bit of that delta influence. So temperatures are uh, not quite as hot heading southward in places like Chico, for example. Uh, temperatures for the north coast in the low 60s, still looking at you know that patchy fog off and on over the next several days, still around 100 degrees for Siskiyou, Modoc, and the Eastern Mountains, and over 100 degrees, well over 100 degrees for many parts of Trinity County as well. Let's take a look at that smoke forecast because that's, of course, impacting the air quality of many of you, right? Especially to the north. So in western Siskiyou County, you know, Scott Valley, you're still going to be looking at a lot of that smoke here. That is coming in, of course, from the Shelly Fire. There's a fire in southern Oregon that's also producing some smoke that will impact eastern Siskiyou and not to mention parts of Modoc County as well. And then a bit of that haze, maybe even some light smoke for places like Trinity County uh, for tomorrow morning. All right. So as you wake up tomorrow morning, that's what the smoke situation looks like. Now, we go into 5 p.m., most of the smoke, once again, will be in Scott Valley. Looks like it's impacting just west of Mount Shasta. There's some of the smoke coming in from the fire in southern Oregon. That right here is some of that haze that you will see. Most likely not in the form of smoke or smelling it, uh, but you may see your air quality degrade just a tad. Also, it's trying to creep its way into the valley as well, but for the most part, it won't be that noticeable. However, by tomorrow night, we may see a plume of smoke coming in from the Shelly Fire that may impact the north end of the valley mainly in the form of some haze. You might smell some light smoke uh, for Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. And of course, there's more of that smoke coming in from the Southern Oregon fire. So again, it's just going to kind of impact not everyone, especially as you head to the south. The wind's not a factor here for tomorrow morning, but again, this is something I, I really like to stress, is that 15 miles per hour or higher, we need to be on high alert. And that's essentially what we're looking at here, especially for the north and to the east. And not to mention even parts of the valley, seeing those winds 15 to 20 miles per hour 
from the south. Then we go into Thursday. Thursday morning, the winds die down, but by Thursday afternoon, again, a strong south wind, 15 to 20 miles per hour, and those winds pretty strong also to the east as well. Again, this is not a major wind event. I'm not concerned about that. Again, it's just when we start seeing those breezy conditions pick up during the hot and dry conditions, it can create problems. Now, we are seeing what we call relative humidity recovery. And what that means is, instead of the single digits that we're seeing during the day, we are seeing about 40 to 50% in the valley, and not to mention you know, a little bit higher um, humidity levels for some of the higher elevations as well. It's the afternoon, right, that we see those lower humidity levels, very hot, very dry, very dry off to the east. Now, one trend that I am noticing, which is a good trend, is I'm seeing a slight upward tick in those humidity levels, even through the afternoon for Trinity County and Western Siskiyou County. Now, this is obviously good for the Shelly Fire because any amount of humidity that we can add to the air to help the firefighters is a good thing because the, you know, the moisture, all of that, I mean, the, um, the fuels respond to that immediately. So when we can see those slightly higher relative humidity levels, we can take that as a good thing. And again, overnight, early morning hours, we're seeing that good recovery Thursday morning. Then by Thursday afternoon, looks like slightly lower for Western Siskiyou County, unfortunately, for Thursday. And still those single digits for the valley eastward, even into uh, parts of central and eastern Siskiyou County as well. So what does that mean for our fire weather risk? Well, we're in that high range, mainly in the orange here for your Wednesday. So we're seeing that typical spots here for central Siskiyou County, Modoc County, eastward, typically not as high as we're seeing here in Trinity County, western Siskiyou County. But look at Thursday, especially in the valley. We're getting more of those reds in there. We're getting into that very high to extreme range for especially Tehama County and into the north end of the valley around Redding. Meanwhile, again, that high fire danger to the north and east, not as high, but again, elevated for western Siskiyou County and not to mention Trinity County. This heat, I tell you what, it's sticking around because we do have everybody, pretty almost everybody in the western United States being impacted by this heat wave in some shape or form. Now it's all relative, right? Because if it's 100 degrees in Seattle or Portland, that's nothing for us. And that's not any reason why we'd have a heat warning or an excessive heat watch. But they're not used to that. So again, it just depends on where you are. But bottom line, it's pretty hot. This heat wave has been impacting the Western United States for quite some time and will for the rest of the week. But we are seeing some relief in sight, but it's still gonna take a while before it gets here. Because as this high pressure expands, moves to the north, northeast, what it's gonna do is it's gonna build higher. The higher we see that dome build, the hotter the temperatures get. But also the higher you build that dome, the more it starts impacting areas around it as well, like us, for example. We're on the outer perimeter of that dome, but as that dome expands and gets bigger, then our temperatures increase as a result. That's through Friday. Now, here's where we have the relief making its way here. Especially by the second half of the weekend, this ridge of high pressure is going to slowly but surely move itself off to the east. And as it does that, what's also happening is we've got this trough of low pressure right here going even through next week that is going to be moving kind of up and over that ridge of high pressure. So not only is it going to help to push that heat to our east, but it's beginning to break down the ridge of high pressure. So that big dome, it's losing some of its elevation and temperatures as a result drop. So this is when we expect around Sunday, Monday of next week to drop down to just above 100 degrees for most of us in the valley. And of course, back into the 90s, maybe even some 80s for some of those higher elevations. And of course, the coast, you know, heat wave, schmeat wave, right? You haven't been dealing, really dealing with it. So here's a look at your trend. There you can see, of course, those temperatures back up to 110 plus for your Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for Reading. But there again is that relief. Now, the normal high shows here around 99, uh, all intents and purposes around 100 degrees here. And we're going to be just above that here as we take you into Sunday through really most, if not all of next week. All right, let's take a look at your wave heights for, for tomorrow. They're actually going to be increasing. In fact, as we go into your Wednesday night, into your Thursday, they're probably increasing even more. We're talking gale force type of situation. So we may eventually, over the next 24, 48 hours, begin to start to see some more small craft advisories and maybe even some gale warnings or hazardous seas warnings. So let's take a look at marine forecast for your Wednesday. The winds, again, they're picking up from what we saw today, but from the northwest at about 10 to 15 knots. Now, as of right now, 
I'm not seeing any advisories, but that may change. Otherwise, we'll just call it patchy fog out there. Now, we're gonna take a look at your forecast for tonight. Still mild, but at least not in the 80s for the valley. Low 70s there, and in the 50s and 60s for the higher elevations tonight. Temperatures in the low 50s along the coast. Now, when we take a look at your Trinity County neighborhood forecast, yes, temperature is actually a little bit warmer than we saw today in most cases, about 100 to even upwards of 110 degrees. But some of those cooler spots like Mad River at about 94 degrees, there is that relief. So we're going from, you know, 107, 109 down to 99 to 100 degrees or so, give or take for Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Central, Southern Humboldt County, uh, your North Coast neighborhood forecast there. Temperatures mainly in the mid 60s, give or take. Again, remember I said heat wave, schmeat wave? Well, of course, certainly last week you saw those temperatures in the 70s, uh, but of course we're back down close to normal for this time of the year. Is that even a, a phrase? I've never heard that before. Heat, may, heat wave, schmeat wave. I don't know. Uh, 98 degrees for Gas Key, 101 for Orleans, 101 for Hoopa, and Willow Creek about 104 degrees. 80 for Smith River, but there you can see along the immediate coast here, we're looking at temperatures mainly in the mid to upper 60s. How about your Siskiyou County neighborhood forecast? Yeah, still a triple digits in there, but not as hot as what we saw this past week, and not to mention this weekend. 100 for Weed, Mount Shasta, McLeod, 103 in Dunsmere. But temperatures mainly in the mid 90s off to the north and east of Siskiyou County. Now for Modoc County, again, just kind of hovering around that 99 to 100 degrees here, give or take. Uh, but there's that relief, mid 90s by Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And your Eastern Mountains neighborhood forecast: upper 90s to just over just over 100 degrees. 100 Shingletown, although not upper 90s Viola, about 91 there. But 99 for Fall River Mills, 100 in Bernie, 101 for Doyle, 102 for Susanville. There's the mid 90s by Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And your Valley Neighborhood Forecast brought to you by NorCal Tractor. Your temperature is back up to basically 105 to upwards of 111, maybe even 112 in some spots here. But there you got 111 for Redding as well as Anderson, 110 for Cottonwood, 108 for Lakehead, and 106 in Whiskeytown. So there's your seven day outlook for Redding. We've got those temperatures 110 degrees or higher through Friday. There is the dip in the temperatures and much closer to normal by Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. At Cottonwood Small Animal Clinic and Cottonwood Veterinary Clinic, we're here to provide the best possible care for your patients. We understand that your pet is your family member, and when your family member is sick, they need urgent help. All our staff is so passionate about the care that goes into all your little creatures. Making relationships with pet parents here in Cottonwood is the greatest feeling in the world. Come find us off the Gas Point exit here in the heart of Cottonwood.